You tell Steve Harvey I'm on his ass. <laughs> he keeps sending all his people up here, but he ain't came up here. We recorded in Steve Harvey Studios for about for about two and a half, three years on the low, on the cool. He didn't even know we was running the show out of there until somebody showed him a clip. And he was like, what the hell? <laughs> Hold on, dog. Y'all recording the show. <laughs> Y'all been recording the show. Ain't nobody said nothing. Y'all recording the damn show. <laughs> who, who, who the hell, who the hell said y'all can record a damn show? <laughs> That's damn good, man. Man, that's what he said. What's up, boy? And then he seen us one night. He was he was leaving late. He she walked down and he was like, "What the hell?" I tell you what, dog. Don't sign nothing until we talk. That was the last time I seen him. That sound better than Jeff. Had shit. I not <laughs> seen him that? I, I'm talking about had I listened to him. Yeah. I'd be fucked up right now. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be dead ass <laughs> fucked up had I been waiting on Steve. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> yeah. there yet. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm letting you know yet. how long you've been bullshitting okay. me. <laughs> I've been since when you see Steve, you tell him don't go on nobody else's show. I don't want to see him talking to Shannon Sharp or nobody. I don't want to hear none of that till he come holler at me. I, I got you, man. Hell yeah. I got you. Tell him bring one of them purple suits. <laughs> I want purple suit Steve Harvey to come to the trap. Shit. And then do 85 South. He purple got, suit. He got a purple one. I know he do. For sure, he got a purple one. I just had to get it off my no, chest. That's all good. It, it's all you know good. how I clear the air. Legally. <laughs> legally. I'm protected by the Second Amendment. By the law. <laughs> yeah, Second Amendment. Freedom of speech. That ain't even the Second Amendment. I don't want nobody out here to be misinformed, so do your own research. But Jay and Wynn, that's enough about me and my personal problems. I told you it's Monday and I'm going through something. But this is the black market. Yes, do it matter? It, it don't matter. matter. Nobody wants to hear about that. Just ring the bell, let them know the black market is open. Nobody cares. Nobody cares how you feel. You know what? We only bring in the best people over here on the black market. So we searching high and low, mm -hmm. in between all, <laughs> we know people who know people who was in touch with the people that we already knew. Mm. And they introducing us to new people. And I was just venting from years and years ago. Now you in position, that just come with the position. There we go. You might have to handle that. He might call you and say, <laughs> hey, handle that. This is true. You already here. He might say, throw him, you know what I'm saying, till I see you again. Then I get back to you. I got you. Because that's just, you know, how me and Steve rock. I I get it. Well, no, without further ado, I'm going to just go ahead and give you a brief intro, let these people know who we got in here with us today. Man, we got Mr. Brandon Williams in here. Woo! Esquire. <laughs> not the magazine. Not the magazine, bro. This dude, he official with it. Now, you all over the world with it. You already told me you're international. How did, how did we get here, Brandon? I mean, I'm an Atlanta kid, so I grew up here, uh, went to Morehouse, went to Emory Law, and then I worked at a big firm in the city. And I like uh, how you ain't give them no press. You were like, yeah. just a big firm? Nah, just a big firm in the city. Yeah. Uh, used to represent a bunch of folks. Met Steve through one of my clients. See? Started representing him, and then uh, he called me in 2016 and was like, yo, I want you to leave your firm. And I was like, what you mean? And How you supposed to be? Like, what you mean? And so, uh, after some deliberation, I left, uh, moved to LA, and then started representing him. And then, you know, as that kind of grew, the stuff started happening in Africa, Middle East, Europe, wherever. And I've been just kind of continuing to represent folks. So, as I started there, 
than just other entertainment people, um, other clients, other businesses. But all of it, the reason I love what y'all are doing, because all the folks that I wanted to represent when I was at Austin was folks that were like us, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we don't necessarily always have like super high level legal experience from, especially like in the business setting. Like we can hire the best criminal lawyers right. known to mankind, I but we know. don't have. I don't even know shit. But criminal. We don't have folks that know how to do deals and business that look like us that represent people like us. So right. that was really my goal, and so that's what I've been doing for the last, you know, 20 plus years. Um, I think doing it successfully, but represent entrepreneurs, established business people, entertainment folks that doing what y'all doing. Um, all of the above, but giving them like the legal services I think people deserve. I don't like how you working with people that's doing what we doing, but not us. Well, that's like listen. when a girl be like, I hope I find a dude <laughs> just like you. <laughs> Bitch, I am me. <laughs> well, I mean, I know your CEO, so like that Who's ain't CEO. Chad, that ain't my fucking CEO. <laughs> Boy, you got your paper. Hey, you better give him the paperwork. <laughs> I don't have no fucking CEO. Okay. I'm my, sure I, enough. Yeah, you, you know, know my CEO. partner. Yeah, your no. partner. Yeah, yeah. Well, I ain't got no CEO. CEO. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to reference yeah, that way. Yeah, hell yeah. What am I then? The man. Yeah, okay then. Yeah, plain and simple. All right. You sitting in the chair, so you asking the question, so you hey. the man. Yeah, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, though. Nah, that ain't my CEO. I don't work for nobody. I, I, I work get with it. some of them. I misspoke. I don't work for nobody. I misspoke. Oh, you know. Legally. I was just generally referencing. Yeah, legally. Yeah. yeah, that. You do not work for anybody. Yeah. No. Yeah. You got your own business. Exactly. You know how that shit be. I do. I start them up every day. So folks like you, they got their own business. I start those businesses. I advise those businesses, I help run those businesses. So yeah, I I've get got it. a few that I'm coming out with this year. I don't want to say I'm on, on this show, but I got some shit that people ain't got no idea that it's going to be me. Oh, I know it's going to be legit. Oh, we're going to rap. Yeah, let's do we're it. We're going to rap. So what kind of advice would you give the entrepreneurs who may be watching this, who not at their level yet where they can afford the services? Yeah, like, I think you got to think beyond like what you think you can afford today because there are so many people that are willing to work with folks whatever their financial situation is, and they believe in like what they're doing. And so you just gotta speak to people that are willing to help. Like, right. I can't tell you how many clients that I took on where the person said they didn't have the money. And it didn't matter because what I always believe in is the people, right? right? And so if you had a great story, you had a great drive, you had a great movement, I would represent you. It wasn't even pro bono for me. It was just like, I wanna see you win. Right. And especially for people to look like us, right? Yeah. Like we don't have people to just give us anything. So for me, if I'm ever in a, a position or opportunity to like give to some folks that helps them like grow their businesses, like I'm in there 100 percent. So for me, that's what I would start with is just like, don't worry about what the money looks like. If you got a story to tell and you got a business to like push, like go push it. And, and like people are going to believe and support you. It comes with the energy of what you're bringing. So if you got the energy, you got the belief, you got the knowledge, folks will come along whether the money's there or not. What's your journey been like the past 20 years? So, you know, I mean, it's been blessed, to be quite honest, man. Like, you know, there are people that work for the firms that I work for, the firm that I work for, and they look like us. They don't make it to where I made it to. And I don't mean that as like a pat on the back. It's just like my journey's been great. I was there for 15 years. I was a partner at the firm. It's one of the biggest firms in the world. And, like, I left willingly. Right? Like, you don't get to leave willingly. Like, right. Them folks, you either On get pushed terms. out. Yeah. You either get pushed out, and, you know, there were folks that asked me, like, how could you be leaving this opportunity? And my view was, I don't even feel like I'm leaving the opportunity. I feel like I'm accepting another one that might take me to a different place. So the journey's been great, man. I've seen the world, like, five, six times over. I've represented some of the, like, best talent, best businesses. Um, that you can represent. I mean, I love what I do. I love being folks' advisor, lawyer, speaker. Everybody, every one of my clients got my text phone. My, my All right, number. let me ask you this. You Let's know. do it. What's one of the coldest deals you've been a part of? Wow. Without violating the NDA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, it's cool. <laughs> You know, um, I, I, I love the deal, like yeah, the initial yeah. deal, but I like the initiatives that so be thrown think, in there. Be like, yeah, and you got to buy me a Ferrari and get all my niggas hair cut. Like, yeah. the extras, that, that'd be so my I shit. So I think, man, like, you know, if I were to give two 
they're kind of the same, but but a little bit different. Um, it was a deal we did with Kevin Hart to take him to the Middle East. And then most recently, like the end of last year, did a deal with Jason Momoa, Aquaman, to Word. take him to the Middle East. And like they all- You got all the Middle had, East connect. I yeah. want to go. Yeah, well, we got you. Yeah, they give me some crazy. They all had their crazy. challenges. Um, give me some but, crazy. But you know, I think the reason I say those two is because they combine like every single bit of knowledge that I've gained over the last 20 years. Negotiation, people skills, being able to deal with like multicultural whatever, and then you deal with two of the biggest stars in the world, and they different camps, right? Like Kevin Hart people way different than Jason Momoa's people. Yeah. So being able to like manage that, get those deals done um, from across the world, right? Like that was as good as it gets. What what deal took you the longest to close? <sighs> I guess the longest deal I've ever done is probably maybe nine months. Word. Well, what's coming up next, man? Yeah, man, I think, you know, look, man, I'm, I'm growing my business, continuing to, like, pick up clients day in, day out. Yeah. Um, I represent a bunch of talent that's, like, coming up with some dope projects. Um, super excited about that. Now, let me ask you this. Do you work... So, because, you know, in the entertainment business, yeah. there are a lot of people who are unknown, but they got the money. Do you work with them also? Yeah. Yeah, I work... I represent, like, a little bit... So think about it from the talent side. Yeah. But I also represent companies that put money into like talent. I represent, you know, people that look like me and you that you would never like you see them walk across the street and they paying, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars for whatever yeah. to present something or to, to, to buy, you know, to particularly buy in. So I it's all business, okay. but like then add entertainment. You know. Let me ask you this, final question. Yeah. This is the last one in the deposition. All good. What <laughs> advice would you give to the up and coming talent, just talent in general? Yeah. Uh, how could they protect their intellectual property on, on that level where they're just starting out, where they yeah. may not have the money? What, what kind yeah, of steps yeah. can they take to start protecting their intellectual property? Up? I think, man, you know, to be like a little bit selfish, call somebody like me. You know what I mean? Like, because I give advice all the time. Whether it's what can they reach you on yeah, social media so and stuff like that? You can reach me. My company's called Law Corp LLC. Um, my email is Brandon at Law Corp L A W C O R P L L C dot com. And then my Instagram is Mr. Bizlaw. So you can any of those places, I'm free, available. You can reach me and uh, ask me the question. Like whatever it is that you need protecting. Um, M R B I Z L A W. There you go. Y'all, he official, even though he spelled business wrong, he official. I swear, no, I was just <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, you already know you part of the team, yeah, man. You're you, always welcome to come nah, here. You don't, anything man. you got coming up, anything you want to promote, any anything that come across your desk that you want to let the, the fans know, the people know, the yeah. artists, the, the talent know, this is the platform to get directly to the well, people. Can so. I say I appreciate y'all and like what y'all are building, growing, being here, man, just coming to see what y'all's facility. Like, this is what it's about. Right. Like, building it from the ground up, everything y'all doing, building your shows, building whatever. I'm extremely, like, honored to be here and proud of everything you're doing. And so thank you for having me and, like, appreciate everything, man. Man, that means the most, man. Yeah. You already know. All the love. black market is open, man. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Man, that was love. Love right there. Let's get it. Absolutely. Cool.